Podcast. Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Breakout. Before we get started though, we want to recognize all those who broke out because it's their birthday and they're breaking out, they're excited, they're ready to eat cake and have a good time. So look to the screen and if this week is your birthday, we would like to say happy birthday to you from GFBC Kids. Well, happy birthday to all those who are so excited to celebrate with you, but not only celebrating your birthday, but also celebrating all of us as we continue to try to break out. What are we breaking out of? We're breaking out of from the ordinary to the extraordinary. And that's the clue we're trying to solve. How do you break out from ordinary to extraordinary? Well, let's, let's look back, okay? Clue one from our first lesson was 19, all right? And then clue number two from the next lesson was 21. And then clue number three was 19. Ooh, we already got us a bonus answer. Clue number five is 10. Hmm. So we got 19, 21, 19. We'll figure out today's clue. And then the final clue number was 10. Hmm. I wonder what this means and how we can break out from ordinary to extraordinary with 19, 21, and 10. But we still got to answer one more clue to figure out how we can break out from ordinary to extraordinary. It's going to be a great lesson today, by the way, because we're talking about the greatest person to ever break out of anything. You know, we've talked about um, how uh, David, excuse me, David broke out from the cave when Saul and his people were surrounding him. And we talked about Daniel breaking out of the lion's den. Well, the greatest person to ever break out ever, and y'all know the answer to this is Jesus. That's right. Jesus broke out from sin and death. He died on the cross, but what did he do? He rose from the grave. He's alive. So we're going to talk about today the greatest person to ever break out of anything they could find themselves in. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. So you guys are about to help me out with the main point. Are you ready? Get yourselves ready. All right, so again, we're talking about Jesus. So obviously the main point is about who? Jesus. That's right, Jesus. You bet that's right. So here we go. Our main point is Jesus has set me free. Let's just say it first again, okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus has set me free. All right, now let's come with some motions for that, okay? Let's pretend we're, you know, in a cage or something. We're locked in or we got to break out, okay? So Jesus has set me free, all right? Are you ready? But you got to really get into it like you're trapped in a cage, okay? So here we go. Jesus has set me free. All right, y'all can do that now. Come on, stand up. You're at home. You're worshiping with us. You're at church with us. Come on now. Here we go. All right, parents, moms, dads, boys, and girls. Here we go. One more time. One, two, three. Jesus has set me free. All right, are you guys ready to learn about that? We're going to learn about that a little bit more. I got a pretty cool object lesson to show you. Check it out. All right, so we know Jesus has set us free, but I've got a cool lesson to show you guys to go along with this before we really get into the Bible story. But listen, I gotta cover something. I gotta, I gotta kind of bury something, you know, like how Jesus was buried in the tomb, how Daniel was in the lion's den, and David was in the cave. So I gotta find something, you know. We find a lot of ordinary, extraordinary things. I see the, see you guys kind of pointing over here. You see something. This is just a lamp, though. What do you, I mean, the light bulb goes, wait a second. If I look closer here, that's not the top of the, hey, there's a penny on top of here. Hmm. All right. Well, this this penny works. I don't I don't know why it's there. Maybe oh maybe it's part of our clue here in a little bit. I don't know. All right. Well, here we go. All right. Just like we talked about, we got some excitement in the crowd. Okay. There's Jesus. All right. Okay. We're gonna bury him in the tomb. We're gonna cover him up. There we go. Nice and covered there. Okay. All right. Now let's get our light there. We'll put it right there. All right. That's right. Fire! All right, we're gonna light the match. Hopefully, get that wick. Burning. There we go. All right. Get all that done there. I'll just throw this in here. Bless you. All right. So, y'all see all the water surrounding the penny, okay? All right. So basically, we got our our stuff here all right okay so uh I, I think i said jesus already so i apologize so let's let's pretend this light is like jesus and we are the penny and what what's, what's the matter with us is we are covered in sin okay but what did jesus do for us again he died on the cross to take our sin so hopefully this works people cross your fingers all right if if jesus takes away our sins when i cover up this candle with this 
glass, it should suck all the water out, okay? All right, let's see if it works. Here we go. Wash the water. Come on. Come on. Is it working? I think I, watch, look. Look at the water rising, people. Look at it, look at that. Look at that water. Did y'all see that? So what does Jesus do for us, man? Jesus takes away all that sin and look at you. You're clean. That's pretty cool. I'm amazed myself, all right? That was pretty awesome. Because look at all that water in that cup right there. Y'all don't believe me? Watch, I'm going to move this cup. All this water's going to come out of it. Ready? Whoa! All right. Awesome. But you know, this was a neat experiment, but um, this really isn't our lesson or have to do anything with our our clue here, I wonder, hmm, wait a second, if I turn this penny around, it's 2005, hmm, I wonder if that has anything to do with our clue, I mean, if you would ask me, I would think we'd have 19, 21, 19, and then what, 21, right, so, I don't know if that's a clue, but I'll, I'll hold on to it, okay, 2005, who knows, all right, so I turned that penny around, what did Jesus do, he turned us around from our sins, by taking it upon himself. That's a pretty cool experiment. All right, but we're not done, boys and girls. It's time to have a limit four in this breakout room place. So help me out, all right? Let's find another clue. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time to find that clue. This is about our time where we go looking around, trying to find our clue for ourselves. So I know we found the penny on the lamp. Again, that was 2005. You know, there's nothing else really to it. You know, it's a normal penny. It did have water on it, but it just says 2005 when I turned it around. Do y'all see anything maybe out of place here? Something they have, ooh, I found some bobby pins. Anybody need something to hold their hair up? All right, okay. I don't think that has anything to do with our clue. Okay, um, there's our stuff from our experiment. Normal water bottles, plant, anything under the table. Nope. If you wanna play cornhole, there's some cornhole under there. Wait a second. This was not up here when Noe was teaching or when Miss Heather was teaching. This looks like some sort of device or something. It's got a battery in it. You know. Y'all think I should take this paper out of it? Yeah? Okay, let me see what this says. Hmm. It says turn around. Okay. Oh, there's the clues. Wait, hold, wait, hold on. You think it meant me to turn the object around, right? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Okay, let's turn it around. Oh, it's a clock. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, it's working. Uh, see a clock? There's numbers and hands and... Wait a second, do y'all see what I see? What do you see? The number five is, it's covered. And it's got breakout on it. Um, Y'all yep. think that's our clue? Yeah. I mean, our penny said 2005 on it when I turned it around. I turned this clock around and the five is covered up. I think we found our clue, people. Yeah. Our clue is what? Number five, good job. Well, all right, okay. Well, we'll add that to the board in a little bit, but I think I'm ready to get into our lesson. Y'all ready for our lesson? These are pretty good clues. Yeah, I'm like you. Let's get into that lesson. Let me grab my Bible. We'll get started with that, okay? Oh no, people. I just realized I cannot find my Bible. I told y'all we were about to do our Bible search for our Bible lesson, but I gotta search for my Bible. I can't find anywhere. What? Tell me. In the drawer, in this top one? I see napkins, some sweaters, some candles, tissue, no. This. What? In the bottom. Oh, in the bottom. The bottom drawer? Okay. Here we go. All right. Bottom drawer. Oh! I found it! Thank you, boys and girls. That was awesome. All right. You were such big helpers to help me find my Bible. Now listen, since we found it, hopefully you found yours. We now got to find our Bible story for today. So, I need you to get your Bible, and I need you to turn it to John chapter 19, okay? So I'll give you a couple seconds. Is it Old Testament or New Testament? It's the New Testament, all right? We got Matthew, Mark, Luke, 
and John. I had mine marked already, so it's pretty easy for me to turn there. But we're going to be reading from uh, John chapter 19 all the way to verse 20. But we're going to begin at verse 38 of chapter 19 and go into chapter 20. And as you know, and as I said earlier, when we're talking about Jesus, most importantly, Jesus' death, burial, but most importantly, his resurrection. But before we do that, let me share with you our memory verse that we've been talking about all month long that reminds us how we can break out from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Let's check that out. It's Colossians 1.13. He has saved us from the kingdom of darkness. He has brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. Again, that's Colossians 1, verse 13. All right? Keep your Bibles open. We're going to dive into our story of Jesus and how He is the greatest breakout person of all time. All right, everybody, keep your Bibles open to John 19 and, and chapter 20. I'll be going over this with you, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple. And the neat thing is for a lot of you kids, you've heard this before. You can share with your parents. Parents, you can also join them with us. Um, the neat thing is we got to share this with the kids this past Sunday on uh, November 15th. So I'm excited to share with you again because it ties in exactly what we're talking about. So here we go. We got us a block here. Who does this block represent? It represents God. Okay. God is first and foremost, all right? He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He created everything. Everything is created from Him and for Him, all right? So it's just Him. But what did God do? God created us. He created man, all right? There we are, right there with each other. But then what happened? Sin entered the world, right? And what happened? That separated us from each other, okay? Man and God are now separated from one another because of sin, okay? We cannot be with it. No matter what we do as man or woman, trying to be nice and, and go to church, read our Bible. It's only through one thing that we can be saved and have a relationship with God. And that's where Jesus comes in. What did Jesus do? Again, according to uh, John chapter 19, verse 20, He lived a perfect life, but God called Him and created Him to do mainly what? To die on the cross for all the sins of the world. For we're all sinners, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And who's that eternal life through? It's through Jesus. So Jesus came, and what did He do? He died on the cross for all the sins of the world. Okay, He was perfect. He didn't deserve it. But He loves you. God loves you and wants to have a relationship with you. So He died on the cross for all the sins of the world. And He truly died. People were there, as you read in the Bible, they witnessed His death. Um, they, they poked Him in the side with a spear to make sure that He was, and, and blood and water poured out. Okay, We are proven that Jesus truly did die. And He died because of... What people thought he was doing was blaspheming and that he was acting like the Son of God. But we know he is the Son of God. He is God's Son. He is 100% God, 100% man. Perfect. But he chose to die on the cross for you and me so that you could have a relationship with God, so that you would no longer be separated from him. But Jesus didn't do that. Again, as you read in John chapter 19, verse 20, they took his body, they buried it in a tomb, they rolled a huge stone over it, they sealed it, they put soldiers there to stand by it. Because what did Jesus say? He said, in three days... I will raise from the grave and I'll be alive. And that's why they put the soldiers there because they were like, oh, they heard, you know, they're going to come take his body, all that sort of stuff. There's no way he's going to be risen from the dead, all that. So what happened on that third day? Jesus came alive, people. Just as we said, our main point, Jesus has set me free. That's because Jesus was set, the one who set us free from sin and death. Jesus was alive on day three. The angel came down. There's an earthquake. The soldiers fell asleep. The stone rolled away, and what happened? Jesus was alive, and He is alive still today. So, boys and girls, the only way that you can have a relationship with God and that relationship with God can be restored is you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We have to admit that we're sinners, and we are. That's what has separated us from God. We are sinners, and there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. And once you admit that, then you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that He died on the cross for the sins of all the world. That you believe that He was put in a tomb and He rose from the grave three days later and He's still alive today. If you believe that, then the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, the Bible says you will be saved. So boys and girls, how is our relationship between God and us restored? It's only and only by what Jesus did on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross for all the sins of the world and you accept that free gift of salvation, we are now put together with God. He is the only way for us to get from here to here. But I don't want to tell you that. I want to show it to you because I'm going to turn this around. And there you go. We have God. We have us. 
who are separated from Him by sin, but because of what Jesus did on the cross, and only by that, He is the way, the truth, and life, and no one can come to the Father except through Him. Because not only did Jesus die, but Jesus is alive. And He broke out of sin and death by raising from the grave and still being alive today to take care of us, to love us, to guide us. He is with us. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to guide your life. If you want to have a relationship with God, turn away from your sins and believe in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord. And the Bible says, you will be saved. Let me pray for us. God, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for the awesome opportunity to continue to learn how to break out from the ordinary to the extraordinary. There's no greater way to do that than to witness how someone would lay down their life for a friend, because that's the greatest example of love. And Jesus did that for us. But God, if there's anybody watching this here or anybody that hears about this, Lord, may they, they know and come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because He is the only way for us to turn away from our sins and to have a relationship with You, God, for the rest of our lives. So may they uh, confess their sins and may they confess to You, Jesus, that You are their Lord and Savior. And may they be continue to live their life believing in You and following You all the days of their life. God, we love You. Thank You for saving us. Thank You for breaking out of sin and death for all of us. And may we come to accept you as our Lord and Savior. God, we love you. And uh, thank you so much for all that you did for us. And it's in your precious holy name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, this has been an incredible day, an incredible lesson, but we're not done yet. We got our fourth and final clue to put up there, on the, or, fi or fifth and final clue. We have our fifth one. We've got to add our, our fourth one that we found out today. So does anybody remember what our clue was today that we found out from the penny, the clock, Anybody remember what number we found? Five, that's correct, it was number five. So can I get our clue for the day, please? Would you like to put it up there on the wall for us? All right, here you go. Put it up there with the number four. Yeah, there you go. Awesome job, everybody give her a round of applause. Good job, all right, she's gonna sit right there. All right, so here we go. We got 19, 21, 19, five and 10. All right, we're gonna put it down on the bottom of the screen here. So here we go, 19, 21, 19, five and 10. Okay, let's think about it, boys and girls. How is that gonna help us figure out to go from ordinary to extraordinary? Yeah, you know, one thing that helps me is it's close to Christmas time, and one of the good Christmas movies that's on like the whole time whenever you turn on TV is The Christmas Story. And what does he have to do? He has to decipher that message by taking numbers into letters. So maybe if we take those numbers and make them into letters, then maybe we can find our answer. Okay, so let's think of our alphabet here. Ooh, 21, that's a far one, all right? Let's, let's go through it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. Ooh, so 19 is S, okay? So that means 21, yeah. Yep, learn about S. So S, so then 21 would be S-T-U. Okay, so U, so S, U. The other 19 is S, okay, sus. Hmm, I don't know how sus is gonna help us bring it over. Let's keep going, okay, okay. Five, five of these, so we got A, B, C, D, E, okay, E. So Zeus, oh no, we don't want Zeus to break us out from our extraordinary, definitely not. Uh, all right, we got one more letter, uh, 10. Okay, so so E is five, so F, e, F, G, H, I, J, J. Okay, I'm looking at these letters here. That doesn't really make sense. Susage, Su Susage. Still have this paper that says turn around. Wait a second, you, kn you know what we did? We had to turn the penny around. Okay, we had to turn the clock, I had to turn the sign, I mean, we have to turn around. Hey, I think I got some here, people. What if we turn the letters around, swap it around, maybe it's backwards. All right, let's swap them up. I think I got the answer, people, y'all see it? Y'all got it? What helps us break out from ordinary to extraordinary? Say, Wendy, it's Jesus! We got the answer, give yourselves a round of applause. Man, that was awesome. How incredible is it that we talked about Jesus and we finally answered our clue that we've had all month long is how to break from ordinary to extraordinary. It is Jesus. And you boys and girls have been a part of this with us for so much. And we thank you. So hopefully 
Jesus will help you break out of ordinary extraordinary. And the best way to do that, just like we talked about, turn away from your sins, follow Him and accept Him all the days of your life. You guys did an awesome job. Tune in for a little review, but we love you guys. Have a great rest of the week. Have a great month. Enjoy Thanksgiving. We'll see y'all next month, all right? See you guys. All right, boys and girls, it's time for some true or false. So you got a 50-50 chance of getting these right, all right? Here's number one. Only some people have sinned. True or false? Only some people have sinned. The answer is false. All people have sinned. So number one is false. All right, here we go. Number two. When Mary saw the empty tomb, she told no one. Ooh, is that true or false? When Mary saw the empty tomb, she told no one. Jill here telling she is correct. It is false because Mary told everyone or anyone she could find, especially the disciples. All right, when Mary saw the empty tomb, she told the disciples about it. All right, number three. Peter went into the empty tomb. True or false? Peter yeah. went into the empty tomb. Keep thinking, Tenley. Is it true or false? False. Oh, no. We have to help Tenley out on that one. Peter went to the empty tomb. That's true. Peter did go into the empty tomb, all right? There was two disciples who ran to it, but only Peter went inside it. That's true. All right, number four. When Jesus appeared to Mary, she knew right away that it was him. Okay, again, this is in, in John 19 and chapter 20. When Jesus appeared to Mary, she knew right away that it was Jesus. True or false? That is false. She did not realize that that was him at first, all right? So false. All right, last one, number five. God sent Jesus to set us free from sin and give us new life. God sent Jesus to set us free from sin and give us new life. True or false? That's an easy one. It's true. Jesus did come because God sent Jesus to set us free from our sins and give us new life. Why? Because Jesus has set me free. Boom!